Hey, I'm Tori Delory, and I live in this Ram Promaster full-time while building it out. In my last video, I prepared to get back to building by getting a storage unit to make room in my van after moving across the country for warmer weather. I transformed my space from this to this, and we left off with me driving to find a safe spot in the middle of nowhere to work on my van. So I picked this spot because I actually had been there once before with a friend, so I figured it was safe and I already had it scouted. It's a wide open space, but I ended up taking a turn a little too early, but there are still trucks on this road and it's a clearly used path, so I figured it was fine to experiment, and it was only a minute from the turnoff I was supposed to take and I thought this arch looked cool but at this point I hear the gun range so I figure I'll just turn around and not mess around with the area for building. I choose this little section here to turn around and I didn't think anything of it because the drive in was all so steady and there were tire tracks leading in here so obviously people have driven in here and been fine I figured. Then I saw a bunch of shiny stuff and thought I would just stop the car for a second to check out the area and there was a cool train passing by. I just wanted to stop and smell the roses for a second I guess. Well you'll see how that goes. Oh no! I thought I was gonna get stuck. Oh shit, I'm stuck. I just put my tra I just put my max tracks in the storage unit. Oh no! Goes off-road one time! Fucking hell. It's all fine though. Look, I get right unstuck real quick. Uh, oh wait, nope, nope, now I'm stuck again. Well, at least it's not that deep. I, I mean, oh, oh, well, okay, yeah, yeah, now it's deep. Well, would you look at that if it's not the consequences of my own actions? Alright, so now I'm stuck and my entire front bumper is just smashed into the dirt. Honestly, I have always been a full send kind of girl, but what I learned at this moment the hard way is that the worst approach to something like this is full sending it. Dealing with something as soft as this, it really just needs a gentler approach and for you to stay on the gas but not go full throttle. Um, so for a lack of better technique... <gasps> this is just straight sand! I don't like sand. Oh, this is so bad. It's coarse rough and irritating. This was not on my to-do list for today. <laughs> is this how I'm supposed to do? I have carried track boards with me for months. For months. This is not good. This is mucho no bueno and I'm too embarrassed to call any of my friends. So we're just gonna have to <laughs> figure this out all on our own. All right. That'll fix all my problems, right? Something else I didn't learn until later on was that I should have deflated my tires and this would have helped increase the tires contact area and surface grip on the ground, increases traction and can make the ride smoother. Apparently for sand, a recommended PSI for a lightly loaded van is about 20 to 25 ideally. And my PSI right now is 65. Oh, it's in my pants. I try to go into the desert once in a video. Once! This is what happens. This is why I'm a city girl. Also, at this point, my internet is super spotty, so I can't actually Google what to do, so I'm just making it up. Directly after this, I ordered an internet extender for the first time after living in a van for three and a half years and only ever having 5G on my phone because if I'm going to start leaving the city, I very clearly need to start preparing for different things. I fear we may have a problem that shoveling a little bit of dirt isn't going to solve. <laughs> uh, right. At this point, my goal is to make all the sand not touch the bottom of the front bumper, and I also learned part of my problem was how harshly I was turning the wheel. So, um, we're stuck. Well, I'm stuck. I, I'm the one stuck in the desert. You, I hope you're not stuck in a desert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's not funny. At the end of the day, is it? It's serious. So what makes us even funnier is that I had traction boards. And remember when I got the storage unit and I just was putting everything in there, having maybe a little bit too much fun with that? Um, I, I may have put the traction boards in the storage unit 
because I carried them around for like months and I never needed them. So God, I, this is like Murphy's Law. This, I brought this on myself. All right, this is the closest thing I have to a shovel. So we're just gonna try to shovel our way out. <laughs> Sorry, not funny, not funny. <laughs> Depressing. <laughs> Another disadvantage I'm at right now is that ProMasters are front wheel drive. So of all of the main types of vans people use for van life, I am currently in the vehicle most likely to get stuck. So you're probably wondering, then why did I pick it? Well, you see, I usually never leave the city. I'm not really a hiker and my extent of being outdoorsy is usually a nice overlook or a stroll to a hot springs. And before buying this van, I'd lived in a ProMaster for three years and never had this problem because I shockingly am not a super outdoorsy type. I think people just assume because I live in a van that I'm outdoorsy, but I think people forget that there is a wide variety of reasons people live in vans. And there's so much more than just what you see on social media. Yes, there are so many who do this for the traveling and the national parks and rock climbing, etc. But there's also a lot of us who got into this for other reasons. Money was tight or they're searching for something within themselves. They just need to get away or they love building tiny homes or because they wanted to live a more minimalistic life. The list goes on and on. For me personally, I started living in a van because I had a passion for tourism jobs. I loved being a tourist guide in Salem, Massachusetts, and at the Ben & Jerry's factory in Vermont. I loved working in Disney World and Disneyland, and I loved all these jobs, but none of them really paid a living wage, unfortunately. When I worked at Disney, I had eight roommates, and my adult friends were struggling to pay bills every week, but we were all so, so happy and passionate, and we loved what we did, and I watched so many of them give that up for desk jobs they didn't even like because of the stress of not being able to pay bills. They just wanted the security, and I understand that, but for me, living in a van was my way to be able to still do what I love and not have to worry about the high price of rent, especially in these big cities that I love living in. It was always a dream of mine to live in New York City, a dream made insane by the price of rent, but made a reality because I live in a van. So all of this to say, when I chose my ProMaster, I chose it knowing who I am and what places I like to be in. And sand is not typically one of the places I find myself in. I guess I just live here now. So this might sound a little crazy, but I'm just gonna leave the van stuck and we're gonna finish what we had planned for today because my brain wants to do that and i i need to finish this video today so pretend like you didn't see any of that i'm just gonna sleep right here so yeah let's um let's build the van and forget all of that so for now, let's just continue for a few minutes on part two of how to build a van while living in it. Maybe these sawhorses can finally be used for more than just drying my laundry. Maybe. So what I really want to test right now is how long it's going to take me every single morning that I want to build to be able to get rid of all this stuff and be ready to have a space that I can build in. I really tried to compact and make this as simple and easy as possible. Obviously, I may have left a few too many things in the storage unit we're learning, um, but what is life except learning through pain? <laughs> On your mark, get set, go. How's that? So I don't plan on removing everything every day. I really want to keep the middle space open, but nothing that I have on the schedule to do in the next few steps needs these areas to be clear. So hopefully that will be okay, but we'll see. And then I just shove the mattress and my blankets onto the front seat for the day. All right, so what I have to power my build is literally this Jackery with a solar panel, which is great because that means I can power it up while I'm out here in the desert. And this Anchor Solix, which at the moment has 52% battery. So I also have this small charger that is also a solar panel on top. So I was trying to rely more on solar panels than having to use my alternator or any other type of charging since I'm not going anywhere. So you may be looking at this and wondering which is better, the Jackery or the Anchor, or you're considering other options. Personally, I was given both of these for free. That's how I chose them, but they also work the same. I like neither better. They both charge stuff, they do their job. I don't ask much more of it. It's really not too complicated and I'm very unpicky, so I really don't have a preference. There's a shooting range over there, which you can probably hear. And I just keep 
wanting to ask them to take me out of the sand on a date with their gun, you know. But alas. Um. All right, so that sums up what I wanted to talk about. So I closed up shop and got back to digging before the sun starts going down. I'm really hoping I didn't damage any parts of the vehicle by getting the front bumper shoved so much into the sand, but I guess we'll take it one problem at a time. Oh, ha, ha. I ended up drawing a face on my plank and named her Planket because we're growing very close with all of the time we're spending together. At this point, I actually had decided I was just going to stay here for the night and it would be fun. It was just a wide open desert. It's legal to stay here, so why not? I brought my whole home. But when I finally walked to a spot to get better reception, I texted one of my friends and they informed me this was not a good place to be stuck. And so they were the coolest, nicest, awesomest person ever and drove 40 minutes to come help me get unstuck from the sand. And I think he was... No, no, this one's yours. Where's my, where's my child? Oh, no, this one's my child. Okay. <laughs> I drew a face on it. We tried a bunch of different things, but what finally worked was he tied Planket, just wrapped her to the tire, and the van finally got out of the ditch and back on the road. So I am very, 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 very grateful that he came and helped me out. And I didn't record any of it because I didn't want to waste his time and ends up we were in a very unsafe spot, so I needed to get out of there ASAP. Now I'm just glad to be back on my way to the city, safe but exhausted, and while I may have wasted my day, I feel like I learned a lot of really valuable things. I already found a much better spot to build as well in the desert that my van won't get stuck at, so we are on a roller coaster that only goes up, my friend. Let there be <laughs> no, mm -mm. we gotta clean that up. That got all messed up. <laughs> we moved a lot of the weight from the front of the car to the back of the car. I'm not going to act like this was any of my idea. This was all his idea. He's the brains of all of, all of our operations. Um, <laughs> and uh, so now I got to... I spent the whole morning cleaning the van, and now I got to re-clean the van. So, one moment. So despite the hard days, I have no regrets that I quit my job, moved across the country, and into this empty van. I am so happy right now, and living in this unbuilt van really has me focusing on how much I love all of the little things in life. Last week, I ordered a pizza and stayed up all night reading one of my favorite books, and it was like my heart could have exploded, feeling like nothing could be better. So when people ask me as well, why am I not rushing to finish the van, I don't really see what the rush is. I have so much life to live, and there is so much joy I'm finding in right now. I don't want to miss it rushing to get to the next thing, rushing to be productive. Isn't that the joy of living in a van? Learning to slow down and enjoy the simple things in life. Why do I have to wait for my van to be built to find that? The mountains are breathtakingly beautiful whether I'm sleeping on the floor or in a mansion, so why not just get out there and see them now? <laughs>